Flexible Thoughts today is Sunday with Kelly Pajek. I, wait, is it Pajek or Paycheck? Pajek. Oh, say that again? Pajek? <laughs> All these years, I still don't even know how to say her name. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so some of you may have uh, seen the email, in which case I introduced Kelly, but she truly has one of the coolest jobs of anyone I know. She commissions public art for the city of New York through the Percent for Art Foundation. Or program? Program. Program. And, uh, and in fact, I know I'm not the only person who thinks this because someone said it to me last night. So there, you really do have the coolest job of anyone. It's nice to hear. So we're going to look at a piece that was a, a monumental piece in your career there. And I'm wondering if you can sort of take us through it and tell us why you're sharing this particular piece of all the pieces you did there. Mm -hmm. This might be a little bit self-serving, however, um, the reason that I'm showing this project is it has the most amount of meaning of any of the projects that I worked at during my time in Arts for Transit. So basically what, if you travel through the station, you will see, I believe it's the eight different disciplines that exist at the Museum of Natural History, and each one of these disciplines is exhibited throughout the station. So here you see the um, yellow-orange part is the earth core, and then you have uh, a planetary, it's basically a globe view of the time that the station opened, which I think it opened in the year 2000. And this image is basically a look at uh, a, a sea life uh, landscape. So this was all done in ceramic and mosaic tile. And this particular section is probably the, I think, one of the more educational components of the station. I mean, I find the whole station educational, but this is actually a timeline of history and the pieces or the animals that you see in kind of blue shadow that don't have detail to them are extinct ancestors of the animals that you see in front. So this basically exists as a you know full historic timeline. And the way we planned it out is that at the end there's a question mark which exists for humans as being the fifth extin extinction. Okay, after visiting this, what are the next three stations you would send all of us to in New York City? Most people have seen this station, but I definitely say go to the 14th Street, 8th Avenue subway station on the ACE line. Uh, Tom Modernus did uh, bronze figure, his kind of roly-poly bronze figures in there throughout the station. Uh, we we're really fortunate to get a great number of figures throughout that. And I have found, even in my travels, that most people have gone to that station. They find it very rememberable. Um, it's... I just think it's a great public piece that people interact with, they remember it, and I think what happens a lot in public work is people walk by it and they don't even acknowledge it, and that's a really great one to you know, see and experience. The other one I would recommend is at 42nd Street at Bryan Park, and it's when you switch from the 7 train to the, I believe it's like the FD, the orange line, and there's a tunnel that separates the two lines. It's done by an artist named Sam Kuntz, and it is a really beautiful piece where it looks like the ground from above is kind of absorbed into the station below and the root system's coming down. And she uses a lot of literary quotes uh, that she um, obviously referencing the library above. But it's a really elegant piece and I think a, night, a really sophisticated way of bringing in an artist that isn't a typical public artist to this public environment in the subway. That's two. I'm trying to think of what a third would be. Actually, I have a real fondness for uh, the Atlantic Terminal subway station, which is one of, it's a station much like what I mentioned earlier about integrated artwork. The artist is George Trakis, and it's somebody I've been really fortunate to work with at the beginning of my career and also recently. And he does incredible integrated public work. And it references the Atlantic and Pacific crossing of the subway, of, at that subway station. And so there are the, all these nautical and boat references, but he uses a lot of native stone from New York State that flows throughout the station. And if you are, there is a skylight, if you know the area, there's a 
kiosk that exists above ground that has a skylight and if you're on a, a subway platform I think it's by the two three and you look up at the skylight there's actually a sculptural boat form that he created and it's to change the light bulbs it actually exists purely as a functional aspect of the <laughs> station but he put this boat in and it actually has a steering wheel and it can steer from left to right to change the lights and it just you know most of the time we'll just sit below the skylight so that's one of my favorite pieces. And actually in the kiosk there on the outside, if you're at the station, there's a small brick that has a small peephole. And if you look in, you'll see it and it, you get a fisheye view of the actual boat that's inside the station. But that's sort of a, you have to find it if, you know, in the know. So you're in the know. <laughs> All right. And then in terms of um, public art in mass transit uh, avenues, is New York the, by far the, the best public art mass transit combination in the world or is there another city that uh, does it better or just as well? New York I think does it well and I think what New York City subway does well is bringing artists into the mix that haven't done public work before because it's very easy for an artist to say as a painter to come into the process and work with somebody who's a great mosaicist to have their work translated into a permanent medium and something that's really durable for the system. The one thing that I think is a restriction in the New York City subway is that we, there are a couple new stations being built, Second Avenue subway at some <laughs> point and um, Lower Manhattan. However, most of the stations already exist. So in some ways it's a little more limited of how an artist can come into the fold and what they can do. and. Cities like Seattle have a really great above, um, like a light rail line, which is outside. And then also, I don't know if they have below ground, but they have a really extensive system of bringing in artists in different ways, what, whether it be temporary or permanent. So I think Seattle is probably one of the best cities for transportation related artwork. Well, thank you, Kelly. That was awesome. Thank you. That was excellent. And... Thank you.